Before we start with the 7-4 lecture notes, I thought I'd show you a little picture here. This is a, of an astronomy observatory in Hawaii. And I talk about Earth science careers a lot, and this is one thing I wanted to show you. This is somebody's workplace. This is where they go each day to observe the stars. They get to see above the clouds on a mountain in Hawaii. It has to be above those clouds because then they get better pictures when they look at the stars. So, why would you want to go into Earth science? Look at this right here. All right, 7-4, election notes, staying safe in earthquakes. Uh, there are different instruments that we use to detect right when an earthquake's going to happen or how much movement occurs in an earthquake besides the seismograph. A tilt meter measures the tilting of the ground and so we can see if stress is building up. A creep meter measures the horizontal movement along a fault so the ground is slowly moving or creeping. The laser ranging device uses laser to detect movements. Uh, so we can detect when the first vibrations occur in an earthquake. And these equipment, all of these are very useful for places that have known fault lines, like the San Andreas fault line. We have these devices all over the place. And, of course, GPS satellites we use to detect changes in elevation or horizontal movements. Uh, remember when we watched the video about the Haiti earthquake, you see that the island shifted, and we used GPS satellites to detect that shift so we see how the ground moved because of the earthquake. Now, there are different types of damage done by earthquakes. Uh, the shaking itself can cause landslides. It can cause avalanches. We, of course, get damage to buildings, bridges, gas and water mains. We see a lot of damage done by that. As a gas main breaks, oftentimes, of course, you're going to get fires. There was a major earthquake in San Francisco in the early 1900s, and as, uh, most of the damage was caused by broken gas lines causing fires. Mild damage done depends on the types of rock and soil. It also depends on the size of the earthquake and how close you are to it. But if you build up on loose soil, it's going to vibrate a lot more than if you build up on a strong bedrock. Uh, so where you build matters, not just in relation to where the earthquake happens. Now, liquefaction is when loose soil is kind of turned to mud. It becomes similar to like quicksand. So if I have my sand here and uh, my loose soil here, and during the shaking of the earthquake, water seeps up into this. It kind of separates the particle a little bit. And if I have any structure built upon this, it's going to sink. It will fall down. It will break. Foundation will be destroyed. So liquefaction, pretty much it turns the ground almost like into quicksand because water gets pushed into the soil because of all the shaking. Aftershocks or any earthquake that occurs after the initial earthquake in the same area, it's caused by the same fault line. Or aftershocks can occur years later, but they're still caused by an initial major earthquake. Now, of course, we talked about tsunamis. They can cause a lot of damage, especially in low-lying coastal regions. There are a lot of small islands in the Pacific or Indian Oceans that uh, always have a big, strong tsunami risk because they're very low-lying. It doesn't take much for the water to cover most of the islands. Now, the way the earthquake feels depends on where you are, where the earthquake is, and how big the earthquake is. A large earthquake nearby will feel like a sudden large jolt, followed quickly by more strong shaking that may last a few seconds or up to a couple minutes. So imagine the whole room shaking for a couple minutes. That would be what happens during a great earthquake. The shaking will feel violent. It will be difficult to stand up. The contents of your house will be a mess. Things will be knocked off the walls. If you have uh, stuff like shelves and cabinets on the walls, those may fall down. A large earthquake far away will feel like a gentle bump followed several seconds later by stronger rolling shaking that may feel like sharp shaking for a little while. Um, so, of course, closer you're going to see a lot more damage done farther away. You'll still feel that vibration. Uh, a couple years back, there was an earthquake in uh, eastern Illinois. And in a classroom in eastern Iowa, they could actually see the effects of this earthquake because there were stuff hanging from the ceiling that would sway back and forth when the vibrations hit. Now, a small earthquake nearby will feel like a small, sharp jolt followed by a few stronger, sharp shakes that pass quickly. A small earthquake far away will probably not be felt at all, but if you do feel it, it will be subtle, gentle shake or two that is easier to feel if you're still and sitting down. Um, if you're walking, you probably won't even detect this one. Now, the type of crustal material, the type of ground underneath you, the seismic waves travel through on the way to you, and the type of shallow crustal structure that is directly below you also influence the shaking. Soft, thick sediments will amplify the shaking, make it greater, while hard rock will actually diminish it. 
the energy happens to bounce around and get focused on where you are. This will also amplify. It's kind of like how sound can seem to build up in a certain location in a room. If you've ever been in a dome structure, you often find there's kind of what we call echo points where you can go into this location and you can hear somebody even whispering from the other side of the room because all the sound is getting focused at that point. Same thing can happen with vibrations from an earthquake. Due to the structure underneath the ground, it can actually focus all the vibrations in a single area. Low-level vibrations that last for more than a few seconds are not indicative of an earthquake, but is more likely a man-made environmental source. Now, of course, we can do some preparation to buildings to prepare them for the shaking. Um, foundations made of stone uh, give you a lot more structure. Reinforced steel corner pillars provide uh, increased strength and flexibility. Um, hollow concrete bricks designed to cause minimal damage they fall into the earthquake and a roof made from reinforced cement concrete so pretty much you design a building to with be able to withstand the shaking but you're also making it to minimize the shaking and also if it does break to minimize the damage afterwards also where the building is connected to the ground is a very important part if you have enough building materials and time and money you can actually try to isolate the structure from the ground make it so that it's on rollers so it can move with the shaking of the ground um, if an earthquake does happen uh, several things you do, drop cover and hold on, get underneath something strong like a table or a bench, hold on one of the legs, close your eyes. Uh, if there's no table or desk, sit against the wall away from things that might fall on you. Think about our classroom with that big TV in the corner, you'd not want to be near that. Get away from windows, bookcases, or tall, heavy furniture. Um, doorways are really good because you see that most doorways, they are reinforced. And so that little reinforcement actually makes it very easy for you to stand in the doorway and be safe. Wait in the safe spot until shaking stops and check to see if you're hurt. Check others on you too. Move carefully. Look out for fallen things. Maybe aftershocks. Small earthquakes, quiet soon after. Um, so be prepared to return to your safe spot. Also, the initial earthquake may damage the building. The aftershock may bring it down. So if you notice that if there is a lot of structural damage, leave the building. Um, get away from it. If you notice that there's cracks in the walls and that, and there are aftershocks possible, leave the building. And of course, be on the lookout for fires. Just because broken gas lines are very common during earthquakes, and if those get ignited, they're going to cause major fires. Um, but if you're outside, move away from buildings, trees, lights, power lines, crouch down, cover your head. You're not going to be worried about the ground opening up and swallowing you. You're more worried about things falling down onto you. So don't rush outside right away during an earthquake. Get into a safe spot inside the building, away from stuff that will fall on you. Then once the shaking stops initially, then go outside, get away from the building, just in case an aftershock will bring it down. Uh, you may never feel an earthquake for as long as you live if you stay in Iowa. You go to some places, though, like California, instead of having tornado drills, they have earthquake drills where they practice what to do in case of an earthquake. Um, and so a lot of places, this is a common every day to them, where if we felt an earthquake in Iowa, a lot of people would freak out and not know what to do. So it's just a matter of staying calm, doing what the rules say, get to a safe spot, ride it 